<laughs> nice, okay, all right, creative. <laughs> Wicked road rash, too hot to handle, and in this case, you know what? Pull it out. Today we're back at it, breaking down and reacting to the ludicrous medical scenes and absurd injuries from Tom and Jerry number three. Let's dive right in. Nice, Dr. Quack's treatment. High temperature, apply ice to patient's vicinity. There's actually measures that we would do in the hospital. If somebody comes in hyperthermic, we'll apply ice or cold to certain areas of the body. Most of the time in medicine, we do groin. My groin! Armpits, neck, to get everything to cool down quickly. Oh, there we go, we got a nice ice tray. Oh, <laughs> we wouldn't do this. It shouldn't be this cold. You worry about frostbite or frost nip. You don't want to use this type of direct cold because then you can actually cause basically shunting of blood in different directions. Yep. Ruh -ruh. Gotta get them breathing. When somebody has a cardiac arrest, cardiac arrest and we get them back, we actually do a little bit of hypothermia type treatments. We were taught to bring it down to about 34, but they've actually shown over time now that just a little bit of decrease in temperature, like one degree is neuroprotective, means protecting the brain. So in hypothermias, you don't wanna go too fast in the sense of you don't want a drastic change in temperatures. You want something slow and gradual. At the hospital, we'll use blankets. Blanket! But we have something called the bear hugger. It is a blanket of hot air. We're putting them in the oven. Oh my gosh. Bad idea. Very interesting, when somebody is hypothermic and we start warming them up, they actually get colder before they get warmer when we actually do temperature checks because what's happening now is all that cold peripheral blood is getting shunted to the core and actually cools the body down a little bit more before it actually gets warmer. Kind of warm, okay, okay. Oh geez, no, not basking. This is how people die. And now you have smoke and smoke inhalation, carbon monoxide just displaces your oxygen and you won't be able to breathe. Whoa, fried. Ooh. The most common burn I actually see outside of the sun, it's actually hot scalding water. And now we're going into the shower for cold water. Okay, got steam happening. Once the burn has happened, it's already happened, but cool packs make it feel better. We use pain medication as well. And then only using those creams and ointments once the skin has blistered open and now you have exposed tissue. Oh, geez. Gonna push them over. Of course. <gasps> oh! oh my gosh, the road rash that happens. Oh, we see that road rash in a lot of motorcycle accidents. Not cool. You'll need a skin graft to put that stuff back together. Oh man, cervical fracture probably injured that spinal cord and probably not be able to move anything below that. Once you have a neck injury, if it's high enough, then you always worry about your breathing apparatus, your diaphragm. Oh, there you go, you're smart. <laughs> nice, okay, all right, creative. Oh no! I feel like people think that their intestines are going to like blow up and pop like that. They do blow up pretty big and stretch pretty darn big and they can pop, but usually there's something causing the issue like a diverticuli or a peptic ulcer. Oh! Ouch! They did a really good depiction of how swollen a hand can get when it gets injured. How many people have had their hands stepped on? I have. It hurts like heck. Typically it doesn't break, but it can swell up pretty good. Typically a lot of swelling has to do with like sprains. 
If your hand is just swollen, obviously put some ice on it, especially in the first 24 hours, ice is important. Thereafter, if it's due to a trauma like this, you probably wanna continue the ice, but say it's like a sprain or a muscle pull or just a pain, you may do ice and heat, just depends on what feels better. Ah. Tom, I don't know if Tom is a lefty or a righty. I don't know. Does anybody know? Let me know in the comments. If it's your non-dominant hand, thank goodness. If it's your dominant hand, it's gonna be tough going to the bathroom. Oh, the waffle iron. I'm making waffles. Who likes waffles or pancakes? Let me know in the comments. Oh, I know when I touch my cat's tail, she don't like it. You burn yourself. First thing you obviously do is get away from the heat that's causing the issue. Cool it down, it'll make you feel better. But again, anti-inflammatories, pain medication, and hopefully it's not an area where you need to go to a burn center. Oh my gosh. <laughs> typically fingers, toes, nose, tip of the penis, ears, all should go to a burn center as well as anything that's circumferential. Fun. Oh! With anything that punctures or opens your skin, make sure that your tetanus is up to date. We just don't want you to get tetanus. If any of you look up tetanus, it causes some pretty bad body deforming spasms. Somebody do something. Get me a doctor. Oh, take it out, take it out, to pull it out. Remember I say don't pull it out, but you can pull this one out. It's not like you're gonna bleed out and die, typically from a thumbtack or attack into the foot. Oh, what torture, what pain. I can't stand the pain. It's driving me crazy. Oh, oh, he, I... Wait a minute. <laughs> so this happens a lot in the emergency department where whatever was there is removed, but the person is still in a lot of agony and then you show them that it's over and then it stops. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Oh. I like that the birds got Jerry's back. When people fall from the sky, the likelihood that you're actually going to survive is like minimal. Uh -oh. oh man, I was just imagining what that would feel like if I had that happen to me. There's a lot of nerves to the perineal area, the perineum. Painful as heck, hitting trees, hitting something that's going to soften the fall may actually help you survive or increase the chances of survival even though you're probably going to have significant amount of injuries. Ouch. Ouch. Obviously, if you survive, you're gonna get a full body scan, head to toe, and then you're gonna check for fractures of every darn limb that you have. Oh no. <laughs> if you get hit by a train, your likelihood of survival is Again, very low. Unfortunately, a lot of people do die this way or they have an amputation of a limb due to the fact that they, you know, trying to get out of the way of the train. Oh my gosh. Wow. When you fall and hit water, it's like still like hitting concrete. Yes, it's not exactly like hitting concrete, but the end result is very similar, especially with a height that great. Tom and Jerry, I mean, it never fails. I didn't realize how much Jerry just rips into Tom all the time. Also, I made fast acting health supplements with you in mind. No matter what the issue, I got you covered. Check out Life Happens. You take them only when you need them. If you guys enjoyed Tom and Jerry React number three, definitely check out this playlist right here and make sure that you subscribe, turn your bell notifications on and hit that like button for me. Thank you so much for watching and stay healthy, my friends.